All right, gobba gobba hey. Uh, let's do some React. So, this is a code along. Uh, what, we, what we will be building is a bagel shop. Uh, so we're using the same API as we did yesterday. Uh, it is deployed, everybody can use it. You don't have to use your local one. And uh, so what we'll have is we'll have a list of uh, bagel items. You can uh, edit them, you can delete them, you can filter them in real time, and then you'll be able to uh, throw up a form. Sound good? This is the kind of thing we want to learn? Yes. All right. Sweet. I'll also say this is about one notch harder than the code challenge next week. This is a like mental frame of reference. Um, not like infinitely harder, but a little bit harder than what would actually be on the code challenge. Okay, so um, first thing I want you to do is, uh, separate from yesterday, we're gonna start totally from scratch. Um, let's do a create React app uh, bagel shop. Time and it takes And then once your uh, Create React app finishes, go into the folder that it makes and get set up. So you want to start the server, fire up your editor, all that good stuff. See what happens if I quit Slack. No, it's it's not that. It's NPM start. Holy crap. No, it's NPM start. NPM run serve is what it is and everything else. Struggling to do that. How many of these do I have going?
any data. While it's doing that, something that I think is good to get in the practice of is let's clean up a little bit. So it gives us some stuff that we don't necessarily need. Uh, for example, this uh, index CSS, let's get rid of that. We can get rid of the logo. We can get rid of the service worker. And so um, we'll end up with just the app CSS and the app JS and the app CSS. I want to delete everything in there. So keep the file, but keep it blank. Um, and then when we launch with that, it's going to tell us exactly what's broken. It's going to go, you're trying to import a service worker and you don't have one. And so you should get rid of every reference to that. So in index.js, that's this, uh, there's the index CSS, there's the service worker, here's a bunch of service worker stuff. Um, and then in our app.js, let's get rid of the logo. And let's get rid of everything that isn't just kind of that big container there. So you should have a very minimal index.js, nothing in your uh, app CSS, nothing in your app.js. Gives us a clean slate to start with. Stephanie. What is the index.css engine for? Why do you have that file? Global styles. So that's where you put something like a CSS reset uh, or something that should apply application wide. It's not necessarily specific to any particular component. Um, it's like your baseline CSS. All right, so uh, I got rid of the service worker and the index CSS. And then we can sanity check ourselves by throwing like an H1 in here for bagel shop. And if we see a bagel shop there, we're good to move on. So give me a thumbs up if you're there. Do you okay, Aaron? Wait, wait, what are you? Uh, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're trying to make this. We're going to start by doing the same thing that we did yesterday. We want to get this listing uh, piece done. So just like yesterday, we're going to start by hard coding that into the document. So our list items have divs in them. These divs are going to end up being those listing components. And each one of them has a uh, name of a bagel and its rating. So should have something kind of like that. And if we do it right, it'll look like so. Now, uh, right off the bat, we can make this not look like crap. So let's do so. So we're bringing in this app CSS file. And there's something uh, that's, this is not a JavaScript thing. This is actually a Webpack thing. The fact that we can import this CSS, and now this CSS is like running on our page, there's some magic behind that. All you need to know is that if you want uh, some CSS to be uh, available in your app, loaded up and stuff, you just import it like that. Just regular old CSS, you're good to go. So let's hop over to that app CSS file and ungrossify this a little bit. Yeah, Arena. Um, if you have like separate CSS files for different components, mm -hmm. you would just put that CSS in that specific component, right? You wouldn't have, or do you have to put it at the top level? Like, uh, it in general, when you're doing imports, you should put them up, uh, up at the top. 
Okay. But uh, the pattern that we're going to follow, this is the only way to organize your components, but the one that we're going to follow is uh, each component gets its own JS file, and then you do a CSS file with the same name as that. Okay. It's a good baseline convention to follow. Yeah, Dan. Um, because that's what is that's what this component is going to end up being. By and large, you don't want to use like li as a top level container for a component if you can get away with it. Because now I can only use that inside of a list. It's entirely reasonable that I might want to reuse this as part of like for example a show page. Well, that's not in a list. That's all by itself. And so if it's in here. It's standalone. If it's in the LI, not so much. Um, just one more. Yeah. So is it that each parent um, component is only one, one, chip, one child? So each yes. Parent, yeah. Yep. Uh, so every React component, and this is the case in every framework, by the way, uh, has to have one singular parent. So I can do that. I can't do that. Uh, that'll throw up immediately. Adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, uh, Vue even has a fake uh, tag called a template that never actually shows up in the DOM. But every component framework requires you to have one top level component. Cool. So let's ungrossify this. So this is funny because this is basically exactly what I was doing with the um, uh, Hashketeers yesterday. But if I uh, do a little bit of resetting, like maybe set the margin and the padding to zero, that's an okay start. First thing you can do to make something not look like garbage is fix the font. So we're going to go to Google Fonts, and when in doubt, use Roboto. It's a very good typeface. So we're going to go with um, the default, go over to Import, import that right up at the top of the CSS file, just as is, and over in the body, we're going to say font family. Roboto, comma, sans serif. Immediately, that makes this app look significantly better. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to consider the semantics on this a little bit. So if you go back to our diagram, this is how the app is roughly supposed to look. So I'm going to say this is a header, this is a main, and I'm going to say that this is a section, and let's get that far. So I'll wrap that h1 in a header tag, and we'll wrap this in a main tag. And then inside of the main, we're going to make a section. And sections, uh, as a rule, should have headings, even if we don't show them. So we'll call this um, bagels. And what have we got so far? Cool. Uh, one more styling thing. We're going to say that uh, the header and the main should have padding of three rems. It's a little bit too much on that. 
What if that's two? I'm going to go with three. I'm not going to, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that the header has a padding of three rems and main has a padding of zero and three rems. And that's a lot better. Cool. So if you're keeping score, yours should look like mine. Questions so far? All right, onward. So uh, let's componentify this. So um, my challenge to you is I'm going to put four minutes on the clock. I want to see if you can do. Uh, see how far you can get through the steps we did yesterday. As a reminder, that's component-ifying this and then putting the component in there. That's component-ifying the entire list and then putting that in there. And then the last step of that was, who remembers? Make it dynamic with a fetch. Cool. Four minutes. Give it a shot on your own and then we'll do it together. What's the fetch link? The fetch link is, great question, bagel-api.fis.herokuapp.com slash bagels.
not alarming. Can somebody who has it up slack out the, uh, the link? Okay, there you go. Aaron's face is cleaning up nicely. <laughs> yeah. I like how uh, my first day back, I thought I could go back to the gym, I decided to go boxing. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Is that what happened to you? <laughs> I have a lot of boxers in my family, so as soon as they found out I could go back to the gym, they were like, dude, you wanna go hit the bags? <laughs> I was like, sure. And I turned into a like, spar. Oh my god. And then this happened. Did you did protect your face? Huh? Why did you protect your it's face? The money maker. I was wearing headgear to protect my know, actual right? head. What is he? Whatever. It's what is it? Well, my face just got punched in the face. All right, stop talking. Let's uh, let's do the rest of this together. So, first thing I need to do to componentify this, who can give me the first step? Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And so I know that a lot of you have done React dot component. You can also do, and this is my preferred way. You can destructure, the, that's actually not a destructuring, it's a named export. You can pull it out that way. Yeah, I like how that looks. All right, and then put that in a render method. Okay, cool. So this has been classified. What next? Uh, component, ooh, 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 that's like the last step. First step. Yeah, let's do, uh, let's call it a bagel listing. Call it bagel listing uh, dot js. Uh, since you guys were asking about CSS, you can do these at the same time if you want. You do like a bagel listing.css. And then uh, this one's going to be functional component. So export default function bagel listing. <laughs> What's the argument that that takes? Props. Cool, so then I'm gonna import React from React, and while I'm at it, I'll import same folder, bagel listing.css. Anybody know why I have to put the dot slash there? It's in the same directory. Okay, well it's in the same directory, why can't I just do that? It'll barf at me if I try to do this. Let me know why. I'll rephrase it. How come this is working even though I don't have a file called React in this folder? Mm -hmm. Where's it installed? Oop, package.json says that I should install it. That's not where it is installed. Mm -hmm. This is saying look for a folder called React and then import the index.js file that's in that folder. That's what that means. If I start it with a dot, I'm saying this is some local file. This isn't a node package that I npm installed. This is one of my files. Starting with a dot or a dot dot is how you indicate that. 
All right, so I have exported this. Now I'm going to return one of these. And if I don't want to hard code these, what do I do? That turns into type, I think is what they're called. Yep, and this one's props.rating. Okay, very nice. So now I can replace all those ones that I just did with my new component bagel listing and then say type still going to hard code it everything rating 2 awesome and then that's going to go there that's going to be plain and some number and then last part of that I need to import the component that I just made Import bagel listing from dot bagel listing. Now, if I did that right, hey, cool. Still working. What's the next step? What's the next step here? What's the deal with? Did it yesterday. I like that. So we're going to call this bagel listing. Or, sorry, bagel list. Uh, just like with the, with the listing, you can give it a CSS file also, even if we're not doing anything with it yet. And I'm going to say that bagel list probably has a lot in common with bagel listing. So I'm just going to copy that to start with and delete some stuff. Make sure the names are right. Do you store the CSS files in the components folder? Uh, yeah, you can. Another way you could do it is you could make a folder for every component and keep its JavaScript and CSS together. That's a pretty common way of doing it. Um, all right. So then bagel list is going to take this UL and return that. And since it has the bagel listing component, We need to take that import away from app and give it to bagel list. And actually, let's just change it to bagel list. And then we can put bagel list in. And if we did all that correctly, it'll throw an error. Um, oop, missing a space. If we did all that correctly, everything looks the same. I want to highlight again that this process, it's red, green, refactor. We had nothing, we had the right thing, and then we just keep it working as we make it more dynamic. So much better than like, all right, all the work, all the work, all the work, all the work, fingers crossed. Oh no, that could have gone wrong anywhere in these like 50 steps that I just did all at once. That's why we're doing it this way. It's how I actually write code myself. It's not just a thing I'm doing in a lesson for students. Cool. So uh, our bagel list. Hmm. How can I make this more dynamic? Okay. 
even before props, I can put that right here. I'm trying to do smallest steps possible. So if I say that bagels is an array of objects that have a type and a rating, Okay, and then I have this array of objects that I need to turn into an array of, I heard it, components, cool. So two objects turn into two components, so that's an example of a map. There we go. So I'm going to make a dollar sign bagels. That's equal to bagels.map, and that returns bagel listing with the type as bagel.type, and the uh, rating as bagel.rating. Cool. Now, Oh, and uh, since we're trying to get uh, list items here, totally appropriate to have uh, LIs now because this is supposed to be a list. So since that's an assumption, we could totally wrap these in LIs. That's, that's a very reasonable thing to do. And now I can take all of these and replace them with bagels. And I can even tighten up the syntax on that so it's all on one line. And if I did that right, everything still works. How is this different from state? It's not state. It's a functional component. It can't be state. Serves a similar sort of purpose, though. How is it different? Can't be passed down as props. Can't be passed down as props? What else? Can't hmm? Yeah. So the cool thing about props is I pass those down, and if they change, this component re-renders. No such thing there. I just said it. Nothing will re-render if that changes. OK, so now let's try passing down bagels as props. So I'm going to make, oops, over in the app component, let's make some state. And let's see. Then I can just copy that over. So I've got state uh, bagels. And then in that bagels list component, we can pass those in. Bagels equals curly's bagel, uh, this.bagels. This.state.bagels, sorry. And then the thing that we change with this is this becomes what? props.bagels. And if we did that right, it all still works. Absolutely. So what we have right now in our app component, we set a state object equal to bagels, which is that array of objects. It's hard coded. Everything is still. Then we passed that state in to bagel list. One component state is another component's props. So that becomes this. Props.bagels is the state that I passed in. Then 
I mapped through that, turned each of those objects into an LI with component in it, and then rendered that on the page. Questions so far? Cool. Neat. Now, Arena, what am I doing now? Now you can close it now. Yes. You can do component did mount. And what am I doing here, Arena? Uh, you can batch to the back end URL. Mm -hmm. Which was bagel API FIS Heroku app dot com slash bagels. Does it matter if it's HTTPS or HTTPS? It does. Um, TLDR, use HTTPS for these. Okay. You should use that absolutely everywhere except localhost. The reason that you can't do it with localhost is technical. It's because the thing that makes something HTTPS is a certificate. And since localhost is running on your computer, the only way you could get a certificate for that is if you issued it yourself. And that's called a self-signed certificate, which defeats the entire point. So your browser will go, no! It's a self-signed certificate. Don't load it. Otherwise, use HTTPS for everything. Great question. All right, so I'm going to fetch that URL. I'm going to take the response, I'm parse it. And then I'm going to take the bagels that I get out of that. And what do I do? This dot set state. And I want to replace the bagels that I have with the bagels that I get back. So that worked right. Hey, there's, there's my, my favorite, my four cheese. And I want to initialize that as an empty array. Cool. Anybody remember what happened when I uh, set that to null or didn't set it at all? What's going to happen when I look back? Yep. This is like a core React thing, uh, is that these different states that the app is in, each one of them renders. So before this fetch even fires, it will try to render the app as is. And then when this comes back and sets the state, it re-renders the app again. Every time the uh, state changes, re-renders the app, re-renders the app, re-renders the app. So every single time it does that, it needs to work, which is why that needs to have some kind of default value. Awesome. So that gets us to where we were yesterday. What questions do we have so far? Uh, could you give some keys? The what? Oh, the keys? Yeah. Okay, good call. So when you're, absolutely. So where do the keys go? In the what? Yep. What part of it? gets the key. Hmm. What element does key get set on? What? The li. Always. You need keys when you're making a list uh, like a list of things. The li is always the one that gets the key. So we can say that the key equals what? Bagel.id. Bagel.id. Good man. Cool. And so then, eep, something that didn't like. There we go. So no more tears. Questions so far? Cool. I'm gonna say, well, let's do the let's do the post next, 
Then let's do the filter. Because like you guys are going to need to know filtering next week. And then let's get to update and delete. All right, so I want to I want to be able to add a bagel. How do I, where do I start? Everybody think to yourself, I'm going to call on somebody. <laughs> Look back at our diagram. That's this thing down here. Cool. Martin, how would you uh, start approaching getting this feature in? Uh, I have to guess. Forms. Yeah. That's exactly what I would do. So, let's see, is it part of that same section? The, that's debatable, but. All right, so we'll make a new section. So we'll say we add a bagel, and Martin wants us to add a form, and in that form, We've got an input, and um, let's see, things that this uh, input needs. Give it a type, text, um, let's give it a placeholder of um, type. Let's do one that's a number, a placeholder of rating, and let's do one that's a submit button with a value of add bagel. And so if we did this right, we get that. Neat. So we can, um, we can absolutely start to ungrossify that. <coughs> Say um, this has a class name of add bagel. And then over in our app.css, we're going to say add bagel inputs should be display block. Okay, better already. We're also going to say that add input forms uh, have a width of 400 pixels. And our, all of our inputs are going to have a width of 100%. Why did I do that? Yep. So I'm setting a constrained width on this container, and then want everything in it to take up the entire space. It's a little bit too much. Let's make that 300 pixels. Better. One kind of goofy thing in CSS. Barely see it. You see how the button and that are not the same width? There's a hack around that. It's hacky, but it works. We're going to set one for everything. We're going to use the star selector. We do box sizing, border box. We'll get into what that means right now, but you can pretty safely put that on every style sheet you write for the rest of your career. Um, and you'll You'll be better for it. Oh, what do you know? Everything's the same with now. Magic. Another thing we're going to do is add a little bit of padding to those inputs. So we'll do 0.5 rems of padding. Hey, looking better already. And then one last thing. Let's do a margin bottom of uh, one rem. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. 
Little things. Your form looks less stupid. Because the submit button, that's a good question. Why? Oh, really? Yeah. How strange. That always happens to me. Every single time I move the style of the arm, it just never, never happens. <laughs> so, if you want to, if you want to specifically target that, another thing you can do is inside of square brackets, type equals submit. That also targets the submit button. Other questions? Okay, give me an affirmative thumbs up if you're ready to move on. <coughs> All right, I think we're pretty good. So, next thing we need to do is control this form. Okay, anybody remember how we did that? Okay, so even before we get to the submit listener, two parts of controlling a form. What were they? Yeah, so we want to bind the state, and then we want to update the state. That's the two parts of controlling a form. We'll handle the uh, submit next. But I want to bind this value to something like this.state. Uh, we can just make a new object for this. So we'll do this.state.newbagel. Dot type. And for this one, value equals this dot state dot new bagel dot rating. And then that means we need to make those up here. So we'll say new bagel type. And I was thinking about this too much yesterday, but we should really default it to five, or like nice in the middle. We can also um, improve usability on this a little bit if we constrain that number. We can say min equals one and max equals 10. Um, cool, so now the, stating the state of that should be bound, and it is. This is defaulting to five now. So that was half of controlling the form. Other half of controlling the form is updating that. Because, yeah, it's bound to that state. So if the state doesn't update, what's showing up doesn't update. So we need to handle the change. So those are getting long. Once they start getting long, I like breaking this up into new lines.
All right, so I want to do an on change, my favorite. Um, and uh, we're going to generalize this in a sec, but we'll say uh, handle type change. And then we can do a handle rating change also. So that means we need a handle type change. And then, how do I write this? I write it the same way as that render method? No. No. Cool. What, how do I write it? Yeah. Got a fat arrow this. Say handle type change, handle rating change, and these take in the event. Um, pro tip, React, Vue, Ember, Angular, all these don't use the DOM directly. We can't do document.create element, we can't do query selector. Um, everything we're doing is abstracted on top of the DOM, so we can't really use it directly. Uh, it uses a virtual DOM, yes. Uh, but events, events are part of the whole DOM infrastructure. I know there was a reading about this in the labs. Anybody know what's special about these events? That's part of it. Anybody remember what they're called? <coughs> Sin. Synthetic event. So if you examine that in the console, it's a synthetic DOM event. It's just React shit that looks a lot like a DOM event. Okay, so um, when this updates, I want to set state. And I'll say that I'm setting state for add new, or what is it, new bagel? Yeah. And I can, um, you can do this a couple different ways. I think one of them is like you can um, spread whatever the a current new bagel is. This dot state dot new bagel, and then um, say, and the type is event dot target. Uh, dot value, and then we can do the same thing on handle rating change, where that's just rating now. And if we did that right, we should be able to type in this form now. Hey, magical! If I want to make this more generic, because there's a lot of repetition between these two things, how do I do that? Okay, how does it work? Ooh. That'd be one way to do it. So this is going to harken back to our like mod three functional programming kind of stuff. Here's how I would handle this. I'm going to um, I'm going to do a higher order function on this, where it takes in <coughs> the uh, the property. You'll see this pattern a, a lot in React. And like this is the same kind of mind fucky shit that we saw during FP. What is that doing? We just set all that aside for right now. What 
What does handle change? Somebody explain this to me in human words. Nobody? Give it a shot. Yep. What does it return? Let's, re let's rewrite this longhand. So if I just take all of this out. That's the exact same thing. The this binding is all goofy on it, but if I write it that way, what's happening? Yes. This is what we want the function to look like. But what's cool about this is everything inside of this body can see that property that we pass in. I'm going to keep that there for reference. But what I'm looking for is instead of handle type change, I want to handle change and call it with type. So that's going to return a function that can see that type, but otherwise is expecting an event. Works the same way as the other ones. That's fucking cool. So now we'll do something like const new bagel is um, do like this dot state dot new bagel and then do new bagel at property equals event dot target dot value and then this dot set state um, new bagel And if I use that same handle change function down here, that it still works. Nope, doesn't like something. Oh, it's because I overwrote it like immediately. There we go. Works. Take a good hard look at that handle change function. There's a couple places in React we have to do this, so you should get comfortable with this pattern. I can't pass in property and event at the same time. I'm not passing in event. React passes in the event. So if I needed to be able to see those other things, I need to do it as two functions like that. I would like a brave soul to explain to me how that handle change function is working. Volunteer. It's hard. Everybody's shaky on this. Doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Cat, give it a shot. Pause there. So it's this isn't a uh, function. It's not the name of the function. What is this right here? That's like what we're taking in. Yes. Parameter. That's the parameter for the function. Yeah. 
Cool, keep going. So we set that parameter mm -hmm. um, on our on change. Yep. And then it calls off our event function. Ooh. It returns our event function yes. passing in that parameter of the first. Yes. Or the, which is the property. Indeed. And then this is just regular JavaScripty kind of shit. Using, uh, we're kind of making a placeholder for that new bagel. We're using bracket notation to dynamically set a property. And then we're using set state. All that's happening there. It's funny, we were, uh, the staff was talking about like this, this pattern and how like it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. I don't know if you guys knew this, Brian was a, um, uh, a physics teacher and a math major in college. And so he actually picked up on that notation. He's like, oh, it's like f of g of x. It's like, yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> cool. So, um, all right, so we're handling the change. Our form is uh, controlled just fine. Yep. Sure, you can do that. Is there a benefit to this? Um, <coughs> so like that would be something like, give it a name and call this rating. Call this type. And then you don't need the properties. Right. Function, function. Right, and so then you could do event.target.name like that. You could do that. Um, this feels more reacty to me, uh, but otherwise they do the same thing. And like there are like plenty of opportunities in, or places in React where you do have to use uh, these higher order functions like this, um, but they both work. And I won't ding you if you do it the other way. Is it sort of? Is it kind of cutting? No, I wouldn't say it's cutting corners. It's purely a style thing. But that higher order function thing, like React people go nuts over this stuff. We use it everywhere. And there are some benefits to it. Um, if we had broken these out into separate functions, they're independently testable, which is kind of cool. Um, I guess that'd be the case with the uh, other way too. But yeah, this is, this is the one that I see more often, but they both work. It's not... Cutting a corner, really. Good question. What else? Cool. So we have successfully controlled our form. Now we need to be able to like actually submit it. I'm going to do an on submit, and we'll call this add bagel or this.addBagel. And uh, add bagel is going to take in an event. Otherwise, it's a bad error function. And then what do we need to do in here to add the bagel? Default. default. Very good. Now what? Okay. Make a fetch call. So I'm going to end up going to the same place as I did here. Hmm. So what we're going to do is this is a good opportunity to abstract this out. So we'll say that this URL, let's copy it up at the top of app.js. And we're going to, it doesn't even need to be in the class. In fact, it shouldn't be. And we're going to call it base URL 
And do it like this, capital letters with an underscore in between. And we're going to take off the slash bagels part. At some point, this is going to end up getting read out of an environment variable or something like that. But what we're trying to do is separate this from all these different paths that we tack on to the end. And then this component did mount fetch call we're doing here. That turns into make those back ticks. And we do something like base URL slash bagels. And now we can do that same thing in this fetch call. You can say, all right, take the base URL slash bagels and do your fetch to that. And you set the method to post. We're going to set the headers to content type application JSON. And we're going to set the body equal to JSON.stringify. And uh, we could pull the values out of form data. I don't really have any problem with that. We could also grab them out of state. I think that's, that's more common with React people. There's, there's something that I don't like about that, but um, that's fine. So we can say that it's type is this dot state dot uh, new bagel dot type. We could say that the rating is this dot state dot new bagel dot rating. And if this came across my desk, I would probably immediately refactor this. Any ideas how I would do that? Uh, we can. However, if new bagel starts keeping track of other things like errors and whatever else, um, sorry, Dan and I were just talking about this the other day, you will end up adding some property to this. And if you end up passing in the entire object, you'll regret it at some point. Not today, but six months, a year. And so it's better to be explicit about what you're passing in. But even keeping that in mind, we have a more expressive way that we can do that. It's ES 2015. Any guesses? Uh, almost. Bracket. Destructure it! Reach for destructuring every time you see this kind of shit. That's your like smell, but like that should probably be destructured. And cool thing about that, look how nice this makes our, because now we can use object shorthand. That's the entire reason this pattern became so popular. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right, so we want to optimistically render this. Okay, so this is this should add it. I'll bet it works. If I Say, plain bagels, there are six in my book. If I do that, nothing happens. But if I refresh, there it is. And if you're using this API, you see that too, because we're using the same server. But I probably want to make that show up real time. How do I do that?
Okay? So this dot set state and what am I setting state to? Bagels. And what's bagels equal to? So yeah, so I can say the type and rating. Oh, actually, this is kind of interesting. It's going to bark at us if we do this. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right, so I've got that in there. What else? I need the existing bagels. So this.state.bagels. But otherwise, that'll work. I'll bet if I do this, I get a warning. Let's see. Um, raisin. I'm a fan of those. Ooh, why did that happen? Yeah, these don't have IDs. Where do the IDs come from? They're generated by the server. Mm. So what do I need to do? What's that? Ooh, so I could do that. Uh, and this is like, this is a hacky pattern. I do not like this, but it, it's a really cheap way to get this done. Is as soon as you do that, refresh the, uh, the entire list of bagels and then just replace all of that. That'll work. I can do this without making an additional network call. I take a look at that post that I did. What came back? Weird. So what can I do? But what trade-off am I making then? Because there is one. I have to wait for the fetch to finish before I render. So if I do a then response, response.json, parse it, and I get back a bagel from that, I can put my set state in there. And put bagel in. Now it has the ID. So I make cinnamon. Cinnamon's pretty good. And now it did that. Doesn't have the warning anymore. Fucking cool. Oh, yeah. So I still have cinnamon there. Probably don't want that. So as soon as I set that, how about I uh, this dot, uh, I can do it in here, a new bagel, and then do the same initialization that I did here. Oop, didn't like something about that. Oh, comma. All right, so this app.js component, this is getting busy. I kind of feel like this add a new bagel form, this should sort of be its own thing, right? So how about we do that? I'm going to say touch source add new bagel dot js. And while we're at it, let's add a style sheet too. And red green refactor. All we need to do is keep this working. So 
Let's open up add new bagel. Export, uh, let's see, let's import React. And this is going to need state in it. So let's bring in component. Let's export default class. Add new bagel. And then uh, return, oops, render, I mean. And then what this needs to return, let's take this, let's take this whole thing, this, this section. So I'm going to remove that, paste it in here. All right, right off the bat, lots of stuff that we need to bring over. So we need an add bagel handler. We need state in here for new bagel. We need handle change. Cool. So one of the things that I'll do is just copy over state, all of it, and then delete the stuff you don't need. So like we don't need bagels, but we do need the rest of it. And so we can delete new bagel from this state. That's pretty cool. All right, we also need that handle change. And we go, all right, can I bring this over as is without needing any other things? I need base URL. So, oh, dude, wait, do I? No, for that one? No, I don't need base URL for handle change. I read that wrong, sorry. Um, all right, so handle changes in there. I also need add bagel. Now this one, I'm actually gonna do this a little bit differently. So I'm gonna bring add bagel over. I'm gonna copy it. I'm actually going to break this up into two different responsibilities. In the add new bagel component, all I want this one to worry about is dealing with this form shit. I don't want it to actually do the fetch request or set the state or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have it prevent default, and then I'm going to have it uh, like get the bagel out of the current state. I'm going to send that back up to the app component. So what I want this to be is a function that takes in a bagel. Doesn't, doesn't need to know that it came from a form. It's not its business. And then I want it to stringify that bagel, and then I want it to add it to that list. This is way more focused. It doesn't also do all the form resetting and reading and default preventing. This is a function that I can pass in to our add new bagel, you say add bagel equals this dot add bagel. And now this, uh, this component has a way to handle this behavior without also needing to define the fetching and all that kind of shit. And now this component doesn't need to worry about what state a controlled form is in. That's pretty cool. So this add bagel will prevent default, and it's also going to be responsible for 
resetting. Like that. Otherwise, it calls in this dot props dot add bagel. And what we need to give it is the stuff that got passed in. So we can move that destructuring over here and then give it type rating. And then all the rest of this is the other components problem. So when this form is submitted, it calls this components add bagel. Nice. Prevents the default behavior, rips the stuff out of state. And then calls the add bagel function that it was handed in with just the bagel stuff. And then reset state. Nice separation of concerns. Yeah, absolutely. What, are you on new, add new bagel mode too? I am. Okay. Oops. My capitalization on set state got fucked. One more time, the add new bagel component, that has the form now. When that gets submitted, it calls add new bagels, add bagel function. Prevent the default behavior, rip the bagel out of state, and then call the add bagel function that we were given, completely different function. We just give it the bagel. This function's job is to do the posting and state management and all that kind of crap. This one just handles the form part. Mm -hmm. So now that one takes in the bagel, adds it to the database, adds it to the local state. Much better split of responsibilities. You could. Yeah, they don't have to be the same. So if you want to, you can call this one post bagel. So if you want to call that post bagel, that's fine. More questions about how this works. Why we did it this way.
Cool. So one more thing I want to do before lunch, and then I want to see if we can pick this up again today, do the rest of it. One more thing I want to do, this will give you a little bit of practice with conditional rendering, is, oh, other one. You want to import uh, the CSS that we made for this. So you can say dot add new bagel dot CSS. And then we can take the app CSS that was the stuff that was only relevant to the add bagel thing. Rip that out of there. Add it into there. And uh, where did I break base URL? Probably also import had new bagel at some point. Stands component. There we go. Very nice. Hey, I see some of you adding some uh, bagels. Dope. I don't know. I didn't write it. Um, so uh, last thing I want to do is do conditional rendering on this app. Yeah. Um, so on your uh, bagel form, did you bring over the form and the section it was in? As Correct. Well? Okay. I did. Is that good practice to just bring that whole section or keep that section like, on your, your top file? Like... I don't know that I would make a rule around this either way. I could see it being completely reasonable to have the form be one component and this section be another component. Like maybe this is add bagel page and this is add bagel form and like the headings in there. Especially if you might be able to add a bagel in more than one way. So maybe you do it this way, maybe you do it inside of some other thing, but you want to be able to reuse that comp component in a bunch of different places, and they might not all have the exact same heading. In that case, I'd probably split those into two different components. Great question. Which part of the CSS did you take over the bagel? Everything that was just related to that, so these two. Other questions? Why did you use the set column in after? Um, that's a slightly more complicated question, but the, put it this way, the dumber you can keep a component, the easier it is to work with. Something that makes a fetch call is more complicated than something that doesn't. And so I, I try to have any kind of like network requests or something happening as high up the hierarchy as like I can get away with. Um, and really what I'd probably do even beyond this is wrap these fetch calls in some kind of like data, com data uh, module or something like that. Um, but uh, any kind of like interaction with a network or a uh, API or something like that. If this component doesn't have to worry about that, that gets easier to test, it gets easier to reason about, it gets easier fucking everything. Great question. What would you mean by the data module? Sure. So like if I just made some data.js file and said, okay, this thing export, um, uh, export, um, fucking, uh, get bagels.
And then I could like do something like throw all of this in there. And now I import this module and it is called get bagels and then set the state off of that. But the actual network part of that is like not in the app.js file anymore. That's what that would look and like. And you can do like export default function, get bagels, export default function. Exactly. You just have them all in one spot. Exactly. So all your network shit's in one place. And then you start building little patterns like, okay, I probably don't need the response.json in every single one of these. And so that becomes like a function that you just wrap everything around. And these headers, well, these are kind of common. And so you end up making something that's like post, and then you just pass in whatever the data is, and it figures out the URL from there. Or like the um, developed Denver site, um, I have a URL builder where like it's not just base URL, it's like, is it a post? Cool, what model? I'll build the URL for that from there so you don't have to type that out every time. It's like, it follows a logic, right? So if it follows a logic, you can program it. Um, cool. Other questions? All right, let's do this conditional render and let's go to lunch. So I don't want this add new bagel form showing up all the time. Uh, I want it showing up if like a button gets clicked or something. And so I'm going to start that by saying all right, so I've got a button there. And when that button gets clicked, I'm going to say uh, that this toggles uh, toggles add new bagel. Oop, this dot. Something like that. And what that's going to do, add new bagel, it's a function. Yes, it is. I was just, that was a trick to see if you remembered. <laughs> uh, so all this is going to do is what's called uh, trip a flag. So we're going to keep a flag in state. Flag is just Boolean. So we'll say like um, add new bagel is, or let's say is add new bagel showing. And we'll default it to false. And then what this does is it sets state for add uh, is add new bagel showing. It sets it to whatever the opposite of what it is right now. So we'll say is this dot state dot is add new bagel showing. Just inverts it. It needs to know what, so this evaluates to true or false. What are you trying to make true or false? And then in here, we can do like is this dot state dot is add new bagel showing if true then that component, otherwise null. And now, click me. Now we can toggle that form showing. And furthermore, we can change this to like, to its own conditional render. So we'll say this dot state dot is add new bagel showing. 
Well, if it is, then what I want to show there is a minus. And if it isn't, then what I want to show there is a plus. Yep. Plus, minus, minus, plus. That is crazy. Yeah, gross, <laughs> elegant. Cool, so if we look at our original plan, got it, got it, got it, got it. So still want to do the filter, still want to do uh, update, still want to do delete. What's uh what's y'all's schedule look like today? You have survey at two. Okay, let's uh let's pick this back up again at three. Does that work? I'll also post uh the code that we have so far up on a repo. So if like you got abandoned somewhere in there, uh, you can pull that down and we can just pick up together. Sound good? Yes. Cool. See you guys at three. Very welcome.